Good morning. Good morning. Hello there. Hi. 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 How are you? Oh, very well, thank you. I've seen you before somewhere, but I don't think I've actually spoken to you. But I think I've seen you in some lessons yesterday. Um, hello? I've lost you now. Um, hi there, can you? Yeah, I've lost you. So I hope to see you back in again. I'm going to read today from a book, a well-known book waiting for people to join me this morning. The sun is shining. Yesterday it wasn't. Yesterday it was very overcast. Here. Hello. Hi. Hello there. I lost you just briefly for a moment there. Yeah, can you, can you listen to me? Um, well, I can hear you. Okay, thanks. I can hear you, yes, I can. So, we're going to read a book today called mm -hmm. The Prince and the Pauper. Have you heard this story before? Uh, no, I, I know that the story because it's by Mark Ta Twain and uh, I listened when I was young, uh, but in a Spanish language. Ah, good. So you know the story. Can you just tell me what you know about the story, what it is about? Oh, it's about the relationship uh, be, uh, between one... Um, I remember that, I, I don't remember exactly because I was very, very young, but I think that in the ancient uh, city of London was born uh, a new uh, ch children in one uh, in, the, in the 16th century, I think. And uh, one boy was born uh, to a poor family. And I think, remember that this family didn't want uh, this baby. Uh, is it possible that is the beginning? Uh, yeah, that is about two boys, yes, and they came from different backgrounds. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, I, I think that I don't I don't remember exactly, but I think that during the, the uh, history, these uh, boys uh, changed the the position in in society. But I don't remember exactly because I was very very young. Well, me too. I've read it years ago when I was young, and so I only want to uh, speak about the idea of the story, not everything that happened exactly. So, can you just tell me the basic idea of the book and what happens? But not everything that happens, of course, because it's a long book. But do you remember what the story is, is about? Um, what do the two boys do? One is the prince, is the Tudor, the, the, the son of the king, uh, and the other is the, not the most poor, but uh, near, and uh, they had a different style of life, and I, I don't remember, but I, I think, or I don't know if it's in real uh, history or, or in my imaginations, but I think that they changed um, uh, their position. They changed their positions, yes, okay. So the poor boy was able to change places with the prince. Yeah. 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 Uh, let me just see who's here. Um, 
Alma, do you hear? Hello, I'm here. Yeah, of course. Hello, do you know this book? No. <clears throat> well, it's about two boys. One was a prince and one was a pauper. This word pauper here. And this means he came from a, a poor background, not a very rich family. And he managed to change places with the king, with the prince. How is it possible, do you think, that two boys can change places? Maybe they uh, seem e each other. They seem... Okay. Yeah. Yes. How can oh, yeah. we say that? How can we say that in English? Maybe they, they are identical to each other, maybe. Their appearance. They, they, their appearance is similar. They, yeah. what is the normal way we say that? They look alike. They look like, yeah. They look alike, or they look like each other. Yes. They look like each other, or they look alike. Well, I don't think they were twins. Were they twins? No, because if they were twins, they would probably both be paupers or both be princes. So, Andrea, are you here today? Yeah. Hi. Right. Have you heard of this? Have you heard of this story before? Uh, no. So, it might be interesting then. There's some of the. We've got some echo somewhere. I don't know where it's coming from. Be careful if you're echoing. So, Faisal, are you here? Josefa, uh, Maria, you... Uh, yeah, you say, yes, yes, Josefa, I, I don't... No, I'm, I'm sorry, just, I didn't understand my no, name. No, I, I yes, wasn't yes, asking... Yes, I am here. I was asking somebody else, but I just noticed that you have a little echo somewhere when I speak. I don't know why. Uh, just be careful with it, if you can s try to find out why. Because when... It I, is from the last person. Echo. Is it? Okay, thank last. you. Sometimes it's difficult to tell. Maybe it isn't you. Maybe it's... Right, all right. It's better now. It's better now. It's Thank better. you, Igor. So, uh, who else has heard of the story? It sounds familiar to me, but I have never read it. But it sounds familiar. Great, okay. So, we'll see how familiar it is. So, Yosef, in, I can see in mm -hmm. the chat that you've said, I watch a cartoon about this story. Yes. I think I think that shouldn't be in the present simple I watch a cartoon about this story because present simple means you do this regularly um, yeah. and do we really watch this cartoon regularly maybe we do but if you say I watch a cartoon about this story then it's something you regularly do I have seen okay. maybe I have I watched I have seen yes hmm. yes okay <laughs> So now I will also give people the opportunity um, to read it from the website that I'm using. I've actually copied from, um, from the web and we're making a page so that if it goes well today, we can put links to the reading lessons. So we can read today chapter one and maybe chapter two. Mm -hmm. And then if it goes well, we can put those reading lessons into this page so that we can come back and listen again. So here it is at the moment and here it is on the screen here. So without any more to do, let's get straight on and, in and start reading it. So Andrea, yeah. are you, uh, would you uh, would you like to start chapter one and read the title and then start reading? Now, I may interrupt you from time to time because it's quite long and we'll see how it goes. I don't know how much of it you will read, but if you start, that's a good start. Okay. Um, chapter first, The Birth of the Prince and the Pauper. In the ancient city of London, on a certain Neptune day in the second quarter of the 16th century, a boy was born to a poor family of the name of Kenty, who did not want him. 
On the same day, another English child was born to a rich family of the name of Tudor, who did want him. Right. Let, just let me say a couple of words there. Autumn and uh, born. Try to get, uh, not burn, but more born and autumn. Born. Great reading, though. Very clear. Very well read. Let's continue now. Okay. Uh, all England wanting, wanted him too. England had so long looked for him and hoped for him and prayed God for him that now that uh, he was really come, the people went an early mad for joy. Right. Now, what does it mean if you say uh, longed for, to long for somebody? Um, so, uh, he waiting, uh, the England uh, waited for, uh, for him, maybe. I don't know. If somebody longs for something, it might mean that they have a desire for something. Um, Josefa, I, while you're not reading, I would like to keep you muted. When it's your reading turn, then we can have you back on the mic. But I've just muted you for a second. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No, uh, uh, no I, I'm not. Josefa, I'm just telling you, I, want, I muted your mic until it's your turn to read. It's not re quite your turn yet, but yes, please okay, mute, okay. mute it until it is your turn because there's a little echo there. Thank you. Good. So, um, Andre, a bit more from you, please. So, longing for means a kind of desire or wishing for something. It's, okay. Yeah. So, let's go on, please. Uh, mere, uh, mere acquaintances. Mere hugged, acquaintances. Acquaintances. Hugged and kissed each other and cried. 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 cried to cry Sorry. in the past cried now yeah. what is that word mere so sometimes we see this word mere uh, a mere mere acquaintance what do we use the word mere for uh, mere is for simple it's all, it's like um just not quite as as important but not so important but just so mere acquaintances not really best friends but mere acquaintances so okay. um so somebody thought they won a lot of money on the lottery, uh, but they only won fifty pounds, a mere fifty pounds. So mere is little, not much. All right, let's go on. A bit more from you. Everybody took a holiday, and the high, high and low, rich and poor, feasted and danced and sang, and got very mellow. And they kept this up for days and danced together. Right, okay, let's, let's move on and we'll go round and round. So, um, and by the way, everybody, when you're waiting for your turn to read, you can um, speak when I'm speaking, but let the reader read, and then when I'm speaking and talking about the reading, then everybody can say, do you mind if I ask a question or something like that. So, um, does anybody... Uh, have any words that they see in front of them at the moment which they'd like to ask about? Um, mellow. <laughs> mellow. Know. Yeah, mellow. I've, it's often used to describe a kind of coffee taste, mellow. Um, mellow is not particularly strong and rich, but quite um, calming in a sense. So, mellow. This is quite an old book, but this word is still used today. Um, mellow. So, where else could we f see this word mellow? Does anybody else know where they might see the word mellow? I've seen it in coffee quite often. So, if somebody um, is mellow, they're kind of cool. You know, they're not overreacting. They're um, calm and cool, mellow. And so, everybody got very mellow. Probably means that they felt quite relaxed and they might um, be, uh, they might have had a drink or two, I don't know, but they're, they're very calm at least, they're not overexcited, um, but they were feeling good. It could be used that way here. So mellow can mean not too strong and um, quite positive. It's a good positive word. Any other words that we can see here? What I will do is mark some of the interesting words that we find. So mellow is one. And 
we'll speak about those later. So now let's go on now to Antonio. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. So let's roll on with you. Do you do you know where we are now, Antonio? Yes, I think it's by day. Go on then. Let's let's hear some reading from you. By day, London was a sight to see with gay banners waving from every balcony and and house top. And now splendid. that's very interesting, isn't it? Because we we the, the word gay uh, changed a little bit in the sixties, but the mm -hmm. main meaning of this word is what? Yes, it means sorry, it means happy. Yeah, that's right. Glad so, or happy, uh, something like that. There's actually a pub in London which is called um, the Gay Fusilier or something like this, uh, Happy Soldier. <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, today we have to be a little bit careful with the, with some words because some words have got um, other associations. But that's true. The word gay here is happy. But today we might choose another word. So read on, please. Okay, uh, with gay banners waving from every balcony, house top, and splendid pageants matching along. Pageants. Pageants is a kind of um, prom, a, a official kind of uh, pro, uh, marching, and um, uh, everyone's dressed up like royalty in the streets, pageants marching along. Okay, let's go on to by night. Okay, by night it was again a sight to see with its great bonfires at every corner and its troops of revelers making merry around them. Revelers, revelers. Revelers, revelers. you know, people who are um, getting into the spirit of it, enjoying themselves and, and having a good time. Revelers. That's a word which um, is, is a little bit out of fashion at the moment, but sometimes words come back into fashion in some decades some of these words they, they never die they come back again sometimes so we might find um, some places where people love that word and start using it to, for party goers we, we tend to use other words these days or recently but um, okay so let's go on there was no talk there was no talk in all England but of of uh, but of the new baby Edward Tudor, Prince of Wales, who lay lapped in in silks and satins, unconscious of all this fuss, and not knowing that great lords and ladies were tending him and watching over him. Can I ask you about that word fuss? What do you think that means? Can you explain the word fuss? Unconscious of all this. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. If you make a fuss, what do you do? I had a lesson two weeks ago about a kind of English waiter and um, it was called the stiff upper lip and um, it said that some kind of, some English men don't react to things that happen to them. They don't make a fuss about it. They don't make a fuss. What does it mean? Like. I think that fuss is something like mess or something like that. If you make a fuss about something, uh, you start reacting and you say, hey, what, what's going on? You know, you can't do that. I, I, I don't like that. Oh, hey, and um, kicking up a fuss about something is doing that. But so if you make a fuss, you start complaining or ranting on about something and really telling everybody about it and um, maybe overreacting to something. Excitated. Yes. All right then. So you can finish off chapter one, I think, because you're reading very well. So and and not knowing. Um. And watching over him. And and not caring either. But there was no talk about the the other baby, Tom Kenty left in his poor rags, except among the family of paupers whom he had just come to travel with his pre presence. 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 Yeah, with presence. his presence. Yeah, it, this is a homophone, isn't it, with Christmas presents. Um, so presence, this presence means to be there, to be present. So, yes. Yeah. 
great reading. That was very well read. Now I have to be careful when I move the screen because the whole book is here, which means that if I grab hold of the vertical scroll bar, it will go shooting off about ten chapters, so I have to be careful. And that was a short chapter. Now we have Tom's early life. So we'll move on um, and get some reading done today because we have a whole book here which we might read all of it. Who knows? It would be nice. So let's move on now. Igor, um, yes. can you see chapter two? Yes. So let's hear some reading from you, Igor, today. Let us skip a number of years. London was 1500 years old and was a great town for that day. It had a hundred thousand inhabitants, some think double as many. Okay, now one thing to, we, we're going to see the word London because the city is London. And it's interesting for me because Mark Twain wasn't a Londoner. Where was Mark Twain from, Igor? Um, I don't know, but I can look. Well, he wrote about Tom Sawyer and the Mississippi and... From the United so States. I, I guess he was a southerner from the from the states, and I'm going to look on the internet later to see whether he wrote this book purely from what he know ab knew about London, or whether he actually went to London and lived there. But um, he was from the Mississippi area, um, from Missouri. Missouri, yes. Hannibal. Hannibal. And the interesting thing is that this book has been written in quite a European style, and. Um, his other books, for example, Tom Sawyer, are written in a completely different style, and that surprised me. What, now, how do you say London? London. London, yes. The first London. vowel is a, uh, like in up, because London. we have an O, a letter O often has um, the sound a, uh, like in love and come. And the second one is a schwa sound, like London. London. So, Okay, let's carry on reading there about the streets. The streets were very narrow and crooked. Crooked, and crooked, 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 crooked. Yes, the crooked, crooked. Bit, the crooked. What is crooked? Mm. A I shepherd has a crook which is bent at the top, and maybe that's not really crooked, but um, a crook uh, is a criminal. It's and not he's, he's, right. It's not quite straight, yes. So actually, the word crook might originate. This, have you heard the word crook for somebody who is a gangster or uh, a robber or something? Is sometimes called a crook. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, so the word crook means something's not quite right, and crooked means it's not straight. Yes, not straight. Uh, and crooked, crooked. Crooked, yeah. Uh, yes, crooked. Uh, I uh, pronounce with T sound. Okay, uh, and dirty. Especially uh, in the part where Tom Canty lived, which was not far from London Bridge. The houses, the houses were of wood. When you say were, can you try to say were? Because were where? Where were you? Can you say where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Your were is not moving into the bird enough. It is chair bird, chair bird who, where were you? Once more, where? can you try that where were, where were? Where were. Yeah, that's the way, where, where were. were. So the houses were of wood. The houses were of wood. With the, uh, the, the second uh, story pr projecting over the first. This story, is this story um, something you tell, tell a story, or is this another kind of story? I don't know, second story. What is, a, a, is the second story another story that somebody tells, or is it something, what is the second story, anybody? So, the houses were of wood with the second story projecting over the first. It sounds like a typical Tudor building. Have, has anyone seen those Tudor-style old houses? They, um, they have them in Canterbury, where I live, and um, sometimes, these days, they are black and white. And is the second scheme? Is, I'm sorry, is, excuse me, is the second scheme similar to the second scheme? 
skin. Uh, it, layer. It's it, yeah. Uh, second floor, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm hmm. Yes, and uh, this is this style of building. You can see sometimes in Canterbury, people can walk down a narrow cobbled street. And it's maybe three or four meters across. But upstairs, across the street, two people could even reach out of their windows and touch each other. Because the second story projects over the first, sticks out, and they're closer together. Okay, Igor, go back to, to the text then and let's read okay. a bit more. And the third, sticking its elbows out beyond the second. The higher the houses grew, the broader they grew. There were skeletons of strong criss-cross beams, with solid material between coat, coated, how to pronounce? Coated, coated, coated with plaster. Mm -hmm. Coated with plaster. The beams were painted red of blue or black, according to the owner's taste. And this gave the houses a very picturesque, how to pronounce? Picturesque. Picturesque, look. Now, how, houses, um, if, you s if you say the word houses, the first S is pronounced usually as a Z, as a Z sign, Z, houses. Houses. If you, houses. If you pronounce it with an S, house, um, then um, if you, well, how, actually it's a plural, that's why, because house, houses. Houses. But if you look at the singular of the word, house, house, then it's with an S, but if I say house, with, an e, with a Z, not houses, but house, what am I saying? What kind of, what is my word if I say house? without houses because the plural so the singular is house and the plural is houses and what if I say house a bit like how's your father how house and house but this instead of saying house I say house houses it could be um what is it um, a different word how house with an s house is a noun. If I say house, it's a verb. House. So if you provide accommodation for people, you house them. House okay. them. Yeah. Okay, let's read on there. How, uh, the windows were small, glazed with little diamond shaped panes, and they opened outward on hangs like hinges doors. hinges you know if you you have to oil the hinges on doors because sometimes if you don't you push the door open and you hear a kind of squeaky noise like <coughs> so you have to oil those hinges and and the hinges can swing quite easily yes right good one well done so uh, any let's uh, at the end of each paragraph let's think about words so um there's a word here which is speaking about parts of the buildings sticking out, but it refers to them as if they were like a part of a body. Which word in the text could be a part of a human body, but is here sticking, sticking out parts of a building, maybe the main wooden support structure on the third floor? Elbows. Elbows, yes. Yes, elbows. Good. And um, which word in the text here is something which is used in construction and you might mix it, mix with maybe some mixing material in a bucket and water. Paint. Paint. Uh, paint. It, 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 yes, but it's more of a building material, so it goes on thick, not just on the surface. And it can Blade. be used. It, it can be used in a hospital if you break your arm. Plaster. Plaster, yeah. Plaster. Plus, plaster. Yes, plaster. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so now uh, let's move on to 
the next pa I, I just have to shunt up the text a bit here okay there we go so this is the house so it's s, s sound but you can sometimes hear house as a verb and sometimes words with s change to z when they go to verbs okay so now who's next to read here let's see we've got um Yosifa, your turn Maria, is it? Do I call you Maria? Uh, you, sorry, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. No, uh, ah, but the, no, the other Maria, first of all. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. She was muted. Oh. Now she's not. Good. 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 I can hear you. Yes. Now. Good. The house, <clears throat> the house, the house which Tom's father lived in was up. I found a little pocket called Offal Court. Yeah. Now I'd like you to just say lived because um, we know that sometimes if we don't make the short i. E, I, E change, we end up with okay. another word. Always, okay. it seems to happen, every time. So, uh, you can, people can misunderstand you. So, it, it is an important thing. It could be lived, um, but lived. Very thanks. The house which Tom's father lived in was up a foul little pocket called Offal Court, out of Pudding Lane. Pudding, that it is Pudding Lane. It's pudding. where the Great Fire of London started. Okay. in Pudding Lane, and it's still there, out and you can go there, Pudding Lane. Out of Pudding Lane. It was a small, decayed, and rickety, but it was packed full of... Packed, packed full, packed full. Packed, packed full. full. It was packed full of richly poor families. Can this tribe occupied a room on the third floor? The mother and the fa and father had a sort of bedstead in bed the stead. corner. Bedstead in the corner. But Tom, his grandmother and his two sisters, Beth and Nan, were not restricted. They had all the floor to themselves and might sleep where they choose. They are where the remains of a blank or, or two. Blanket and or two. A blanket or two. They are where the remains of a blanket or two, and some bundles of ancient and dirty straw. Ancient, but, ancient and dirty straw. And some bundles of ancient and dirty straw. But this could not rightly be called beds. No, uh, not, not rightly be called beds. They weren't real beds, so they could not rightly be called beds. When you say bundles of ancient and dirty straw, you should, to get the t clear at the end, um, you should join it with the and, so say tanned. Ancient and dirty straw. Ancient and, and dirty straw. Yeah, okay, but these could not rightly be called beds. But this could not rightly be called beds, for they were not organized. They were kicked into a general pile mornings and selections made from the mass at night for service. Yeah, and again, I would say the same as I said to Igor, that you were reading the word were, W-E-R-E, -E, just like it were, where. Uh, so, where were, can you try to say, where were you? Where were you? Yes, you can do it. I know everybody can do it, but this is a habit we have to try to fix because sometimes it can cause a little problem for the reader listening. So, they were kicked into a general pile. Yeah, it's, it's a big problem for me. It's, where, not, bad. it's not a big, big problem, but you, you can do it. Actually, when you read it just now, where were you? You got the two very clearly distinct, where were you? And that was good. Where, okay. Where so now, are you? Uh, let's think of a nice word here. Uh, I'm building a, a big tower, but it, the structure is not very safe. It's wobbling all over the place. It is a something adjective structure. What is my adjective from the text here? I've, I've built this tower, but I haven't really uh, designed it properly with nice, strong structure. And so it's wobbling, wobbling, it's wobbling. Mm -hmm. Weevils wobble and they don't fall down. They're wobbling all over the place uh, in the wind and, and it looks like it's going to fall over. So the whole structure is very adjective from yes. the text. Uh -huh. 
Which adjective? I don't know. De decayed. Decayed is was going to be my next word, and that was going to be described in a different way. Uh, it's very old, and it started to break down and it's turn not. into dust in parts. Decaying is breaking down because of age. It's so no. small. Is no, it's small. Is it's just small, isn't it? So I'm speaking about something which I didn't really build very well, or maybe because of its decay, it is wobbling and in the wind, and it looks like if you hit it, it may fall down. It's really not looking very safe. It's rickety. Rickety. Rickety, rickety. yes. Rickety. Okay. And um, that will do, I think, from that one, because I want to move on. So well done. Good reading. And now it's the other Maria. Once I've had time to move the text, and I have to be careful because the whole book is in one page, so if I use the vertical scroll bar, I will be off hyperspaced. So I'm going down. Ah, there we see this typical... I know these buildings because I can show you photographs of me standing in streets like this today. And those Tudor buildings used to be brown and muddy coloured, just oak wood, but there was a time, a few hundred years ago, somebody had a bright idea of painting the beams black and whitewashing everywhere so that they're white and black and they look very impressive like that and everyone does it now and so for two or three hundred years this has been the fashion to make them black and white and I, I don't know if there are any in America because the Tudor style buildings were before most of America was built so I don't think there are any, but there may be, there's something called Mock Tudor. Mock Tudor. What does the word Mock mean? M-O-C-K. So, <coughs> does anyone know this word, Mock? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, an, uh, uh, it's a mix of uh, um, bad environment. Well, if you mock somebody, you could say that you're making fun of somebody uh, because you're copying them, and mock means to copy something. So a mock Tudor architectural style is copying the idea of it because it looks good. There are some grand buildings in England which have this style. Tudor, um, the Tudor monarch who's probably quite famous was Henry VIII. So, Maria... The other Maria, Maria yeah. Eklund, yeah. I'd like you to take on the next paragraph. Could you okay. read that for me? Yes. Uh, Beth and Nan were 15-year-old twins. They were good-hearted girls, unclean, clothed in rags, and profoundly ignorant. Their mother was like them. Uh, ignore is ignore, but how do we say the adjective? Ignorant. No, we say ignorant. Ignorant. Yeah. Okay, go on then, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, but the father and the mother w were a couple of... Fiends. Fiends. Fiend. Fiendish <laughs> devil. What is a fiend? I don't know. A fiend is a, ooh, a, bit, a little bit evil sometimes. A okay. Fiendish de not Well, it's used a, a bit lightly, so it's not the real devil, but it's a f you fiend. It's a little bit... Uh, fiendish means mm -hmm. a bit devious. Mm. Uh, they got drunk whenever they could, then they fought each other or anybody else who came in the way. They cursed and swore always, drunk or sober. John Canty was a thief and his mother a beggar. They now, made... did, can I ask you, uh, Maria, yeah. do, do you know any families like this? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the correct answer. Okay, go on. They made beggars of the children, but failed to make thieves of them. Among, but not of, the red, dreadful rabble that inhabited the house was a good old priest whom the king had turned out of the house and home. Turned out of house and home. This is a whole expression. Turned, uh, okay, turned out of house and, and home. Turned out of house and home. With a pension of a few... Farthing. A farthing is money which I had when I was a boy, but was out of circulation. It's a quarter of an old penny. And do you know there's a bicycle which has the name farthing? Have you mm -hmm. heard of the penny farthing bicycle? No. Mm -hmm. 
The penny is the big wheel and the farthing is the little wheel. So one of these first bicycles used to have one big wheel and one very small wheel. Okay. Yeah. And he used to get the children aside and teach them right ways secretly. Mm -hmm. Father Andrew also taught Tom a little, Latin, a little Latin and how to read and write and would have done the same with the girls, but they were afraid of the jeers of their friends. Jeers? Uh, yeah. Do you know yeah. this word, jeers? No. <laughs> People do it at football matches sometimes if they're not behaving very well, like boo, hiss, shh. Oh, okay. just jeering. Cheers, cheers. Okay, cheers of their friends, uh, who could not have endured such a queer accomplishment in them. Great reading, very well done. Now I'm going to choose a word again now for you. Uh, I saw a word in the text, which I remember in London, there was a um, a band name, a rock a, a rock band name in the studio, and I thought, hey, what a great name, because there's an old film. Um, who was that young American actor who died um, very young, years and years ago? Um, James Dean. Does anyone know James yeah. Dean? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a long time ago now, before I was born, but um, he died. And then um, he had a film called um, Rebel Something. Does anyone know that film, Rebel Without a Cause? Sinkhausen. Rebel Without a Cause. So he was a rebellious young man, but he didn't have any reason to be rebellious. And there was a rock band called Rabble. Where's that word? Rabble without a, and then a musical term for knowing how to play some notes on a guitar. So if you play lots of notes together on a guitar, what is it called? Not one note, not chord. picking a chord, yes, and their name was Rabble Without a Chord. And I thought, that's a nice name, I like that. Well read, anyway, that was get really excellent. So, Midu, are you here with us? Yes. Hi there. So, um, I, do you know where we are now in the, in the book? We're, we've read the first paragraph there and we're looking at the second paragraph from the screen which starts with all awful court was mm -hmm. just such another hive as Canty's house could you read there please who uh, me do me do hello me do Ali He's not here. So we'll go back to Andrea again until it's... it's Andrea, are you, uh, um, are you there? Yeah. Great. Okay. I read? Yeah, so over to you again. Okay. All of Alcourt was just such another hive as Kenty's house. Drunkness, riot and brawling were the order there every night and nearly all night long. Broken heads were as common as hunger in that place. Yet little Tom was not unhappy. He had a hard time of it, but didn't, didn't know, did not know it. It was the sort of time that all the awful court boys had. Therefore, he supposed it was the correct and comfortable, and comfortable thing. When yeah, com came. comfortable, that's a tricky word sometimes, but you, you, the second time round on comfortable was much better, good. Carry on, then. Uh, when he came home empty-handed that night, he knew his father would curse, would curse him. Curse and, him, uh, yeah, curse. Curse him and uh, thrash him first. And that, when he was done, the hopeful grandmother would do it all over again and improve on it. And that way, in the night, his starving mother would sleep to him stealthily. With uh, any miserable scrap or crust she had been able to save for him by going hungry herself. Notwith notwithstanding, she was, often, she was often caught in that sort of treason and soundly beaten for it by her husband. Yeah, I'm looking at that word notwithstanding and trying to figure out how we can explain it 
Um, it's one of those words which connects things, um, notwithstanding. So, um, how would we normally say that today? This word is a, is another unusual word. It's, it looks a bit unusual today. Notwithstanding, is it the same as in spite of? I'm just thinking about how we could replace that word. Um, however, maybe. However, she, yes. However is much better than in spite of. Yes. Anyway. However, she, anyway, yeah. It's just a connector, really, like that. So, okay, that's good reading. Um, one word that. Um, Maybe one or two words we need to think about the stress pattern, like comfortable, comfortable. Um, and there's another one, and I want you to find it first of all. It means pretty unhappy or very unhappy. And it might go before the word existence. Um. By the way, the word existence is quite is a little tricky to spell sometimes because you're never sure whether it's e n c e or a n c e sometimes. But um, which word am I looking for here? Which means very unhappy. He had a very he had a mm, existence. Uh, it's towards the end. He's a rebel. Yes, and and that's the when the way you said it was uh, miserable. But it's how do you say say it? Miserate. Can you say? Can, let me write the two words as a collocation and and see if you can read them both. <laughs> In the verbling chat, there's two words there. Try and read both of them together. Uh. First of all, if you have an adjective, like this word, then the ending is not likely to be stressed. So, if you say comfortable, oh, it's old, oh, and miserable, a miserable existence. Mm. A miserable existence. Okay, the next word is a word where it's, it's describing an action. And it's men, probably men, maybe women too, hitting each other and fighting in the streets, but in a kind of um, unruly way. Well, all fighting is, I suppose. Physical way, with hands and arms. Thrush. Uh, which was that word say again? Thrush. Thrush, no. Thrush is when you strike somebody with something. So if somebody thrashes somebody, well, today we use that word metaphorically to mean beat somebody at football or something by a tremendously big score um, is thrash somebody. But, well, a riot, um, it could be lots and lots of people all together running and um, out of control, but this is people really fighting each other in a very disorganized fashion, all of them just fighting in the street maybe, or in a pub. Brawling, yes. Brawling. So the noun is a brawl, a pub brawl. Of course, we hope to only see this in a book, but it could happen in real life. It definitely happens in some of the old westerns. You know, somebody starts um, uh, some trouble in a, in a pub, except it's probably not called a pub, a bar, and they start pushing each other, throwing each other through windows and all kinds of things, and usually nobody gets killed until somebody gets shot. So, brawling. Right, okay, so we've done it up to there, and we've got a good background into this kind of place. So, it's a tough life for him. But he has one advantage in this tough life. What have we learnt about it? What good things are there in young Tom's miserable life? 
he liked he, he accepted this as normal life that's one good thing but there was something else that he was getting that might be useful and may later on allow him to take the place of the prince what would he need if he were to be able to take the place of the prince sorry uh, me do uh, hope to speak to you next time then mm -hmm. uh, no i don't know <laughs> well um should i move back and have a look but he was learning let me give you a clue with one word latin was one word why can't I open the class material? Um, ah, I don't know. Sometimes, if you're inside the, I don't. I sometimes have a problem opening the pages when I'm uh, inside the hangout and everybody else is opening it. So it might just try later, maybe, because then we'll have the recording there too. He learned how to read and write, and he knew a little Latin. Is yeah. That? So he, somehow he was being given some kind of education even quite a good education at home so this later comes in useful so um, who read the last one That's, um, so it's Antonio now is it yes yes so Antonio over to you for this one and um, no Tom's life went along well enough especially in summer he only begged just enough to save himself for the laws against me, uh, me, mendicancy was stringent and the penalties heavy so he put in a good deal of his time listening to good father Andrews charming old tales and legends about giants and fairies dwarfs and Jenny Genie, that looks like a plural genie. Of genie. Uh, I've never seen it before, yes. but it looks like the plural form of genie. It looks like Latin. Like yeah, we would. What, how? I don't ever remember using a plural form of genie because there's only ever one genie if you're lucky. <laughs> so it looks like the plural form of genie. Genie. Mm. And, and that word, that word, um, medicancy. Could you? I don't know if it will be in your dictionary. It's not a word I ever use, so that would be an interesting one to check out. So um, I won't speak too much about that now because I don't use that word. So occasionally, when I'm reading books, I come across words I have never used, and so this is one I've never used that word in my life. Medicancy. So uh, we'll look that one up and see what it's all about. Oh yes, I didn't type it properly. It's mendicancy. Okay. Shall I go on? Yeah, let's read on then. Dwarfs and genii and en uh, enchanted castles and gorgeous, 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 gorgeous kings and princes. His head grew to be full of these wonderful things. And many a night, as he lay in the dark on his on his scant and offensive straw, tired, hungry, and smarting from a thrashing, he unleashed his imagination and soon imagination, imagination, and soon forgot his aches and pains in delicious picturings to himself of the charmed life of a petted prince in a regal uh, palace, palace. Yeah, so he was starting to imagine life in a palace already. Um, the word smart here is used in a rare uh, meaning of the word because usually we use smart to mean um, clever or well-dressed, those two ways. And this is a third meaning. So if you're smarting from a thrashing, what does smart mean? It's a kind of um, feeling that you have, you still feel the pain, the stabbing pain from being beaten, the thrashing. So you're still feeling it, as smarting from something. is usually only used in this gerund form when I come to think of it, because I can't imagine how um, 
I smart from something, but smarting, yes. Is it like suffering from something? Yeah, you still feel the pain. It's ah. feeling it. It's, it, okay. it's ow, you know, ow. Mm -hmm. So, yes, and then you don't see this form of smart so much. It's two other meanings for smart are quite common. One which is dress smartly and um, be smart. So, be clever. Be, um, you know, he's a smart guy. Very, he knows what he's doing or he's well dressed those two meanings but this is another meaning okay let's read on Antonio where are we okay on, one, desire, one desire yes one desire came in time to haunt him day and night it was to see a real prince with his own eyes he spoke of it once to some of his awful court comrades but they jeered him and scoffed him so unmerciful Unmerc oh my God! Unmercifully, unmercifully, that he was glad to give his dream to himself after that. Yeah, well read, very well read, um, pretty well spot on most of it. So, so um, which word in the text means um, well under control and quite rigid, almost strict? Sorry? A word which means that it's under control, um, even quite strict or rigid, rigidly controlled by mm -hmm. somebody in authority, maybe. Mm. Towards the beginning. Charmed. Enchanted. Enchanted is is uh, wow, wonderful, like a dream. It's enchanted. It's like magic. Mm. But another word, which is something, is strictly controlled or rigid. Begins with an S. Mm. Scoffed is um, to make fun of something. Scoffing is a bit like, <laughs> that, that's no good. Oh, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Scoff is to look down on something in a way like this. So where's my word? Then it's at the beginning, and it's near that new word, which I don't know, mendicancy. <laughs> Stringent, stringent, stringent. stringent. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I uh, this next word is um, something which releases something like a dog, you click something and off the dog goes. But it could be that used in the text it's used more metaphorically, not with a dog, but you actually um, initiate something like you are letting a dog run. If you let a dog off for a run, what do you do? You walk the dog and then you... Let he, he's on the lead and he can't run, so you do something to allow him to start running. You let him go. <laughs> Let him go, yes. But you have to click, click, and there it takes him off the lead and... It's towards the end, just past the halfway point. Unleashed. Unleashed. Because the dog lead, which looks like lead, but it's lead, lead the metal, not lead the verb, to lead lead, but um, unleashed. A leash is also like this, a kind of rope or piece of leather to control an animal is a leash. If somebody's on the leash, they are under control. And if they're here we unleashed his imagination so it's all figurative imaginative it's all metaphorical right okay so um, I don't know when the next one would be because originally I was going to read some like it hot but I'm switching to this one now because um, I want to follow a story 
a book, a novel, because um, people sometimes can't make it. So I'm going to put the recording into the book and then continue. And if you miss one, it won't matter too much because you can then carry on yourself and carry on and, and then catch up with us. So see you next time, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye. Maria, thank you. Antonio and Andrea, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.